And we're back with another Pico CTF challenge, this time file types, which is a forensics challenge. And the description is, uh, the file was found amongst files marked confidential, but my PDF reader cannot read it. Maybe yours can, you can download the file from here. I'll go ahead and download it. And our hint is, remember that some file types can contain and nest other files. Let's go ahead, let's take a look at flag.pdf. And we're also unable to open it. So let's take a look in the terminal and we'll use the file command to try to determine what file type this is. And we can see it's a shell archive text, which already is, is very different than a PDF. So let's open our hex editor and try to get a sense of exactly what this looks like. Make this bigger for you. And you can see already, you can see a, a bin sh, and it says this is a shell archive produced with GNU char utils, whatever, to extract, uh, okay. And as we go through, it looks like a shell script. So let's go ahead and let's make a copy and we'll name it flag.sh. And we'll see what happens if I make it executable and I try to run it. And we get a complaint. It says line 119, UU decode not found, restore the flag failed, some other details. Let's open this up in Visual Studio Code and let's try to get a sense of what it's doing. So we can immediately see, yes, this does look like uh, a shell script. See the shebang at the top and VS Code gives us some very nice highlighting. And there's a fair amount going on. We, we see this big blob of stuff. And I'll be honest, I don't write shell scripts very often. You know, I, I write simple ones and I learn when I have to do it. So typically what I would have to do is I'd have to put in a whole bunch of echo statements to try to figure out what's going on and just just do pretty terrible debugging. But I found a pretty cool extension for VS Code called bash debug. So if you go, you can install this. You can see it's pretty popular, about half a million people are using it. And it allows you to do the step-by-step -step debugging that you know we kind of, we expect as developers. So I'm gonna create a launch.json. This is just telling it, how do I start this? I'm going to use bash debug, which is the extension I installed. Defaults are just fine. And you can see I've set a breakpoint here on my initial line, and we're going to kind of walk through at a high level quickly and understand what's going on. So on the left, we have our variables. We can hover over things if we want to see exactly what's going on and uh, what the variables are and we can step through our code. So there's a pattern that we're gonna see a lot here, which is it's looking for something. So in this case, it's looking for MD5, and then it wants to know the version, and if the version, uh, or if the utility, in this case MD5, isn't here, then it's gonna tell us, hey, you got a problem. You need to install something like core utils. So as, as we're gonna see here, we declare MD5 and we find that on our system, it's called MD5 sum. And then we do minus minus version and we get this kind of banner header thing going on. And then we do a grep on it. So you can see you do an egrep for MD5 sum, um, anything and then utils. So that's gonna give us this line right here. And again, if it's not present, then we complain and we tell the person running the script that there's a problem. Uh, we also have an argument here, this minus C, 
which sets the value of keep file. In this case, it'll be true. We've got some stuff that I didn't really understand with IFS, but we don't have to understand most of this. We just need to go through it. Uh, and I'm gonna explain this grouping as well, because this is a familiar pattern. And if you understand this pattern, you're gonna understand about another 90 lines of this stuff. So we've got a path. Our path tells us where we can find things. So for example, you can find executables in user sbin. For each element of our path, we want to do a test. And we want to test minus F if the file exists in that uh, path location, do we have something called get text? So in this case, in user bin get text, do we have it? And then further, can we run version on this without a, an error? So, and if we can, then we go in here and we set this variable, which tells us where to find get text. So let's see if we have get text first. And the fact that it says get text missing arguments is a good sign. Like if I had done something like bad commands doesn't exist, then it would say command not found. But in this case, the program actually gave us output. And further, if we do a minus minus version, then again, we see like a little banner at the top. All right, so this is good. So we expect our system to have this on it. So let's run to this breakpoint inside that'll happen if we find it. We found it, so cool. So we understand this code. You're gonna see the exact same code down here, but instead now we're looking at char. And I don't, I don't really know what char is. It's probably part of that char util that we saw earlier, but we're gonna run until we find that. So let's see if we have that. And we don't, we don't have char util, which is probably what's causing our uh, whole thing to crash. Remember when we ran the script earlier, it failed. If we tried, let's find what the failure was. Uh, it was uudcode not found. So let's see about uudcode as well. And we can see that's also a part of char utils. So you have both char is a part of this and it's suggested that maybe we want to install it and so is you decode so let's go ahead and let's install it because we know we're going to need it and maybe that's the reason why this is all failing and now we expect to pass this test so let's go ahead let's set a breakpoint we ran to it we passed the test we passed this if conditional we ended up in here, so that's awesome. Very good. Uh, this, I didn't really understand. I'll be honest, most of this stuff, you don't have to understand. You just have to uh, run to a certain point, see the output, and see, see what's going on. So we see some touch commands going on. Touch just makes a file. <coughs> Keep going down. We're creating some kind of lock directory, which we can see based off of the outputs. We complain if we fail to create it. Then we get to this handily named flag section. And this seems good, extracting flag. We can see line 119, which was our complaint earlier about uh, UU decode not working. Then we seem to, I don't really know what set does. Do a ch mod on flag. And then we seem to do a checksum just to make sure that everything is okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run to line 119, 118, just because that's what we'd seen was failing. And let's see if it succeeds now. And it seems like it has, and we have a flag that was written out. 
It's in binary encoding. We'll take a look at that later. And then we have some of those goofy locters that were uh, talked about earlier. So let's keep going. We see the restore didn't fail because we skipped over that. We're removing the lock directory. All right, so we fixed our uh, script, so that's good. Let's take a look at this flag and let's try to see what it is. So it looks like binary. We can see at the top, it says flag. It's got some kind of arch declaration. We're gonna run file on flag. See, it says it's a current AR archive. And things are about to get really repetitive, but I, I think it's still worth going through this exercise and, and seeing because it really, it forces you to learn this pattern, which is you get some arbitrary file, you find out, hey, it's a, an AR archive. So let's, let's go ahead and let's call this flag.ar. And you need to do a little Googling to understand, well, how do I open an archive file or an AR file? So something like Linux AR command. And you can see I, I already had to do this, but you do a little bit of reading, you find out R is how you create and insert. So this is AR are to insert things, but we're not interested in inserting. We're not interested in deleting modules. This again is delete. Print uh, seems potentially interesting. What else is there? And T seems very interesting. It displays the content of the archive in a listed manner all right, yeah, that's what we want to do. So we will go ahead and we will do AR T on flag.ar. And it says there's a flag present. All right, let's go back. So now we know the name of that module. And I know I'm going a little fast, but you know, these are all just stupid commands where you, you read and you find out how to use it and then you forget because you're never gonna do this again. So I think it was P to print. Let's see, print the specified member. So let's try that. We will do AR P on our archive and we wanna get the flag out of that. And we did, but uh, it's printing to the standard output. So let's redirect it and let's say, now this is maybe the flag. Go ahead, take a look. Do we wanna open it? Yeah, I wanna open it. And again, we seem to have some kind of binary format. So we'll run file on it, flag. And now we're told it's a CPIO archive. So let's go ahead and we'll call this CPIO. That didn't help. We'll go back, we'll Google CPIO, how to extract. Again, I, I'm cheating. You would have to Google a little more, but, but not much more. I found this pretty quickly. And here we've got CPIO IDV, seems to extract a given CPIO file. So let's go ahead and we'll try that. Was it minus IDV? And if any of you guys are intimidated by this, don't be. There's not a human being on the planet who knows all of these abstract and arbitrary commands. Uh, you know, this is very silly, very stupid. We're gonna do about eight more of these. So we're gonna look at the file type of flag and we can see it's bzip this time. So I'll go ahead, I will rename it bzip. We'll look up bzip2. How to decompress. This one, oh yeah, I remember. This one's actually pretty easy. I think it's just a minus D, yeah. 
So we can see this is compressed data. So we want to decompress. You may find that you don't have some of these utilities. If you didn't have a utility like bzip and you put in bzip here, let's, let's actually, let's do it together. Uh, so I'm going to do an app list and I'm going to grep on bzip. Uh, that was busier than I'd hoped, but all right. So we see that, that guy, I'm going to try removing him. Apt remove bzip2. Oh, that's huge. <laughs> I don't actually want to do that. Uh, just because it's going to take me a long time. But uh, you can remember how I did the S, the char utils, right? I did the, uh, come on, where are you? I tried char, we got the complaint, and then I, uh, I was suggested a library to install. Same idea here. So if you run into something, you'll probably be suggested what you should install. Anyway, enough on that. Uh, so flag dot bzip. Uh, we can see we've got a bzip out, but what type is that actually? Uh, gzip compressed data. Now I happen to know that gzip, you can use gunzip, which is g unzip on flag dot bzip dot out. Uh, now I did this intentionally because Originally, I was not relabeling these things. You, you notice how I was putting .cpio and stuff like that. Some of these utilities, they require uh, a certain suffix, so a certain ending. Uh, others don't care, and you just kind of, you find out, and you find out what they need. In this case, gz is gzip. So let's try this again now. And it actually does help us a lot because we'd be overwriting flag a ton and we would lose track of what we actually had if we weren't renaming these a little bit. So let's, we've got another flag and it's lzip. I uh, can't remember how you do this one. So we are going to go lzip manual. Yeah, maybe it was this. Actually, I'm thinking it's L zip minus D. Yeah, minus D. All right, so we know this is the L zip one. So let's go ahead, let's keep this orderly. Minus D, flag dot L zip. I can't tell. Ah, there we go. L zip out. Well, it destroyed our lzip. Oops. Oh, well. So again, we'll do a file flag.lzip. By the way, I gave this a thumbs down. I thought this was a lazy um, challenge, but you know, we're doing it. Remember lz was lz minus d flag.lzip.out. Uh, let's see, input, ah, we're missing an output. So let's go ahead and call this flag dot un l zip. Cause I don't, I don't know anything or n un l z four. Cause I don't know anything more about this yet. We see there it is file flag dot on LZ4 is an LZMA. This is another one of those ones, the tools that will complain if the suffix isn't correct. So let's just go ahead and let's fix that. LZMA minus D flag dot 
LZMA. See that gave us flag up top. Is this the end? God, I can only hope so. It's an LZOP. I think this is another thing I installed. Let's find out. LZO LZOP minus D flag dot LZOP. <laughs> uh, is anybody still watching? I wouldn't be. Fuck LZIP one more time. So we'll go ahead. We will call this LZIP. And we know what to do here. LZIP minus D flag dot LZIP. I uh, can't do it because this already exists. I'm really tired, so I'm going to just delete it. We've got another LZIP out now. Uh, which is XYZ data, which is another compression algorithm. I believe it's just minus D. It's nice when they're consistent and use that minus D. Now we got another flag there. What is flag? ASCII text. ASCII text. All right. And that to me looks like hex encoding of ASCII. So here we go. If you made it this far or if you skipped ahead, after all that pain, Pico CTF file name manipulation for obscurity. And if you do this one, uh, yeah, yeah, thumbs down. Not a good challenge, bro. Too many layers. Anyway, regardless, hopefully you enjoyed watching me struggle with this. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, comment, uh, all that good stuff. Thanks. Bye.